The SBE class Corvette shows that it is much more sophisticated than a regular warship as soon as it cuts through the cold, smooth surface of the Baltic Sea. This is a great example of nautical, stealth, and cutting edge engineering. The SBE is different from most other ships that fly the Swedish flag because it doesn't rely on many weapons or physical muscle. Instead, it shows a belief system that values limited exposure above all else. The SBE was made in the late 1990s and started working in the middle of the 2000s. Its goal was to replace the old patrol boats and quick attack ships that were being used at the time, while also bringing a brand new design idea to Scandinavian literal warfare. The SBE was meant to be a precise engagement and operationally flexible ship that met Sweden's maritime needs. Sweden's major job is to keep clear control over its intricate archipelagos and the waters that surround them. One of the most impressive things about the SBE is how it is designed to be stealthy. This design lets it be there without being seen. Unlike other Corvettes, this one has a roof and full superstructure made from a composite sandwich of carbon fiber and vinyl ester that is molded into a single monolithic shell. This method of using angled surfaces and embedded materials to reduce the radar signature not only works, but it also makes the ship much lighter. This is especially important for warships that have a big acoustic footprint and rigid signatures since these ships are usually made of traditional steel. The SBE composite structure has the benefits of being invisible and needing less maintenance. Combine this with a diesel-electric propulsion system that uses water jets to drive the ship, and you have a ship that moves slowly and leaves very little behind as it glides through the water. The idea of acoustic discretion is at the heart of its design. This is very important while doing intelligence work or when working near unfriendly beaches. The Swedish architects worked hard to hide themselves from people's eyes and from all kinds of sensors. They used materials that absorbed radar and surfaces that were angled in a unique way. Check if the ship's radar cross-section is the same as that of a small fishing boat. This vehicle's sleek low profile makes it better at hiding from infrared and visible light, but it also weighs over 640 tons when fully loaded. But it has a lower thermal signature because it uses heat exchanging exhaust and heat dispersion techniques. This multi-spectral stealth feature makes the VSB nearly invisible until it decides to fire allowing it to operate close to possible enemies without being detected. But stealth is only the initial part of what it can do. Putting the weapons and sensors beneath flush-mounted panels and hatches that fold makes the noise and signature even less noticeable. If there isn't any battle going on, the main weapon is a 57mm Boar's MK3 automatic cannon that is hidden behind a gate that opens and closes with electricity. This flexible weapon works well against fast attack ships, threats from the air, and targets on the shore. Missiles made to hit ships RBS-15 and MK-3 missiles are stored in its internal launchers, which are hidden until they are needed. Once they are launched, they can go more than 200 kilometers, 124 miles, to attack either enemy ships or coastal fortifications. Two further ways to protect yourself are lightweight torpedoes and a close-in weapon system. If necessary, the VIS-B is expected to move much closer to the shore than most NATO warships, which usually stay a few nautical miles from the enemy's coast. Th this is because Sweden has chosen to rely on its stealth and mobility to avoid threats during operations instead of installing a full CIWS like RAM or Phalanx. In a situation like this, armor isn't what keeps it alive. It's electronic warfare systems and invisibility that keep it from being found, jammed, and targeted. It has an electronic system suite called Word, Weapon, and Radar. A three-dimensional radar, ESM sensors, and advanced decoy systems all work together to change the electromagnetic spectrum in an integrated defense system. VSB is part of a tiered marine defense network that gives other ships and coastal batteries information. Link data interchange and Swedish digital command algorithms work together to make this possible. The Archipelago network is the system's digital backbone. It lets people share information on targets that are being tracked in the air, on the water, and below the surface in real time. The ship is thought to be one of the quietest of its size since it has a combination of diesel, electric, and water jet propulsion systems that let it move smoothly and silently. It can go up to 35 knots, and because it doesn't have standard propellers, the noise from cavitation is much lower. The design is based on the premise that it must work perfectly when utilized near enemy shores or during spying missions. This speed also provides it a big edge when it comes to flexible maritime response and coastal defense because it can quickly maneuver itself over the waters of Sweden and the Baltic Islands. The VIS SBE was never meant to compete with any solo encounters. Its design philosophy is what really sets it apart from the rest. It does well in complicated settings like dense archipelago pathways, real limitations, and environments with several threads.
only a few corvettes built by naval nations throughout the world are clearly made for one area the water lanes and shoals off the coast of Sweden. It has a lot of weaponry that it can use to attack, such as rockets, precision weapons, and the ability to move without making noise. But its defensive strength comes from its ability to stay hidden or not be found at all until it's too late for its enemies to do anything about it. Of course, no warship lives alone, so comparing the SBE Corvettes from other countries helps show how different the American SBE Corvette is. The French Gawain class Corvette is made of steel and aluminum, for example. The Gawain is better at staying power and is completely safe from close-in weapon systems, CIWS, but it doesn't have the acoustic, stealth, or electric drive silence that other models do. Its design allows it to do a lot of different things, like general purpose, maritime patrol, multi-surface, and limited anti-submarine operations. This makes it suitable for use in missions around the world. It is more obvious and less stealthy at those positions, but it also has more weapons in general. The Go Win may carry a wider range of weapons, such as SCALB, EEG, cruise missiles, and fully developed air defense radars. This would make it a more flexible fighter, but it would also make it easier to steal. There is an interesting dispute between NATO over Germany's Brown Feige Class K-130 Corvette. It has a low profile and high standards for staying afloat, and it also has ram missile launchers, a helicopter deck, and a 76mm OTO Mailer gun for air defense but it doesn't put as much focus on stealth as the SBE was supposed to do. The main goals are to improve the unit's defenses and extend its operational range. Even though the company was focused on a small niche market with very few clients, they were able to build five Corvettes between 2002 and 2013. The Society of Boat Engineers SBE, has inspired the naval world to take a more literal approach to stealth design and to make it more popular. Several navies, notably that of Turkey and South Korea, have cited VIS-B's progress as an example for developing their own stealth corvettes. The Turkish Auto Class military program focuses on radar, reducing the vehicle's cross-section, and how armaments are arranged inside the vehicle. This product has a lot of features, such as its multi-spectral stealth compared to SBE, its steel holes, and its smaller size restriction. The Inchon class from South Korea uses typical materials for the whole thing, but it also has weapons that are hidden from view. SBE is still the best in the business when it comes to real cross-spectrum stealth integration. The VISB fleet has also been upgraded over the years. There is now a new version of the original word system. Improving sensor fusion made the radar work better and made it easier to share data with Link-22. The RBS-15 MK-3 missiles were changed to have better radar seekers and engine systems. This made the missiles range longer and the size of the striking envelope bigger. There has been talk about either replacing the 57mm gun with a 76mm version that fires quickly and would be better suited to modern air threats, or adding modular unmanned aerial vehicle UAV launch and recovery capabilities for surveillance and targeting support. These changes make sure that VISB is not just a stealth marble, but also a platform that can change with the times and become more deadly over time. In terms of operations, these ships have mostly been used for regular national defense operations, intelligence gathering patrols around the Baltic Sea, and exercises with Finland, the United States, and other NATO partners in the North Atlantic. VISB routinely does a great job on forced silence tests, which demand people to stay hidden in contested marine areas while also giving larger ships targeting data. Because its presence modifies the defensive posture of coastal formations, it can provide an initial layer of sensor bias and a missile offense without alerting enemies. For each corvette, Sweden has made an unmanned surface vehicle and an unmanned submarine vehicle. Sweden has also expanded its independent role to include mine countermeasures. The Corvette can hide offshore and sweep minefields or enemy coastal facilities in secrecy. These systems can be launched and recovered. The stealth ship and unmanned systems working together show Sweden's vision for the future of war, which will be networked, secret, and high-tech. This B has an advantage because he is physically stealthy and follows a certain way of thinking. Sweden has used a defense strategy for a long time that includes coastal artillery, a lot of troops, and a big network of fortifications. This approach is perfect for the SBE. It not only acts as an advanced node in the archipelago's layered defense, but 
It can also work in hidden channels and deliver sensor data to coastal batteries. No other Corvette has been so extensively integrated into national defense thinking that it uses both stealth and geographical sensors at the same time. In the context of broader comparisons with Western warships, VSB represents a distinct approach that prioritizes invisibility over conspicuous armament and literal precision over mobility at sea. It can be used as a base for keeping an eye on and targeting partner assets. In other navies, this job is often done by bigger ships or planes. Its digital networks and set of electronic warfare capabilities make this possible. Trends in stealth and electronic profiling show that future warships will focus more on sensor fusion, targeting that is aided by AI and modular unmanned systems. Most naval forces were worried about heavier steel and propulsion systems, but SBE was already getting ready for the future by using composite materials and embedded sensor suites. That forethought gives it a strategic edge in today's battling world, which is more technologically advanced than ever. Even if the next generation of Corvettes or Fritz will be rolled out around the world in the next years, the SBE-class Corvette will still be seen as an important milestone in naval architecture for years to come. The SBE-class Corvette chose not to use physical force and instead chose a more delicate form of power. It also made Sweden's invisibility a weapon on purpose. It would be too simple to call this just a ship. The longboats of the Vikings started a nautical tradition that has continued to grow through the use of contemporary disguised Navy tactics, which feature stealthy and scary combat. What do you think about the Bisbee? Please let us know by leaving a comment below. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel so you can get notifications when we post new videos.